Good. That was a good day. It was a good day. Last time we talked to you, uh, it was after that one day, and you said you were tired. Are, are you feeling a little bit more energized today? I'm trying. I'm trying. Like learning from last time. So try not to come in here, act like an old man, you know. <laughs> of course, you did, have, you did have two games to play, so maybe it does a little bit harder on you. Nah, today was good. Uh, I'm glad body felt good too. So that was a that's a big thing, you know, on a long day like that. So, and tomorrow's a little bit later start, so we'll get be able to get a little extra sleep. It'll be be ready to roll. Mm-hmm. Three walks in that first game. Um, oh, yeah. Is that just is that just kind of something that you know just happened? Like, how do you get three walks? I don't know, but I'm all for it. I'll take the walks every time, as much as I've caved some days. So, uh, no, I that was awesome. Um, it was just really picky today, I guess. So they didn't throw me a ton of great balls to hit. I think I swung the bat maybe three times in that first game in four ABs. So, really, and I think, I mean, I've been feeling a lot better at the plate, just getting really picky with my pitches and trying to only swing it what I'm looking for, looking for the ball in a certain spot. So it, it worked out well today. I guess we know why they didn't throw you anything with that home run you hit in the second game. Um, was that kind of nice to get that after getting those, you know, free 90s? Was it nice to earn a home run like that? Yeah, that was – normally I don't – I wouldn't say this, but I crushed that ball. That that was one of the hardest balls I, I think I've hit in college. So that one felt good. It was uh, it was just one of those swings that just kind of like – it's almost like your eyes blink and it just happens. But it was it felt good and got the right pitch and just put a good swing on it. Well, um, coincidentally, you know, the next guy we're going to talk to is uh, Carson. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was just up here thinking, you guys are, you know, fifth-year seniors. You're both mm-hmm. fifth-year seniors. You're both corner outfielders. Mm-hmm. You're both huge guys. You're both, you know, home run hitting guys. Mm-hmm. Like, do you have any, you know, so many similarities? Do they call you guys anything? Like, do you have a nickname, kind of like a duo or anything like that? I don't think so. I don't think anyone's ever given us a nickname. He's right here. They're just asking if they've given us a nickname. <laughs> Nickname. Yeah, right. yeah, big two tall guys. Bellas. He said just the fellas. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, it's fun having him back out there for sure. You know, seeing him out there, it's a I've gotten to play with him now for this was our fourth year together. So it was awesome when he came back, and it's it's been awesome since he's gotten back. Well, if it's any uh, inspiration, my, my twin brother and I. We both play intramural volleyball, and we're, yeah. our nickname is the Twin Towers, but we go by the Thin Towers. <laughs> so, so I don't know if the Thin Towers sets up for uh, for y'all as nicely as it does us, but maybe uh, maybe that'll get the gears turning. Who knows? Maybe. I might have to talk to him, or you guys can just come up with one more roll with it. <laughs> we'll get on it. Yeah. All right, so thanks you, a lot, Cade. No problem. Yeah, Cade, you seem to be having um, a little fun with the hecklers there. Um, I think it's after your strikeout, they're left, right, and you. You point uh, out the scoreboard. Just one, I'm not going to lie. It was just one guy. I shouldn't have really done it, probably. It's kind of – I shouldn't have done it. It was just one guy, though. But I'll leave it there. <laughs> Is that – I don't want to say – does that make it a little more fun in a way that, that you can do, kind of do things like that? I don't know. Like – I shouldn't have done it in the first place, but I will say he got me got me riled up a little bit for that next half inning. That's when I made that catch out there. So I had the juices were flowing a little extra out there for a few innings. So what, what did you think about uh, Justin's day? Obviously he hits in the first game and then he pitches and he hits in the second game. Kind of what did you think of that? That's awesome. You know, and he's a he's great at both. He's a great hitter. He's been a phenomenal pitcher this year. Um you know, I think it was pretty cool that he hit for himself. I think it's the first guy that's done that since I've been here. So uh, it was awesome, and you know, I'd love to see it again. Appreciate it. No problem. Kate, I've got to ask, what'd you do between game one and game two? Uh, I went in the training room, propped my feet up, and watched the uh, UFC fight: Marvin Vittori versus Kevin Holland. Is that typically uh, what you do between doubleheaders, situations like that? Just go uh, watch some TV or something like that? Yeah, just get something to eat and try to get off my legs as much as possible. Um, Is that pretty much what everyone does? <clears throat> yeah, for the most part. I, I definitely do. I know the outfielders and the catchers for sure, just because catchers are in a constant squat and outfielders, the running back and forth or whatever, that's uh, – just to try to eliminate as much use on your legs as possible. And in your uh, 
in your second half out of the game in the bottom of the third there, you got that base hit up the middle. I think it was a full count and you had that high fastball. Is that something you were uh, you were kind of sitting on? Were you thinking fastball on that 3-2 pitch? I was just uh, reacting. I think that AB, he threw me all three of his pitches. He threw me change up, breaking ball, and fastball. So really at that point, once, it got, once I got to two strikes at that AB, it was kind of like, all right, anything close, we're battling. And I even swung in a breaking ball that was definitely ball four at one point that was way up and out, but <clears throat> just trying to protect. I'm not going to leave it in the umpire's hands. You don't ever really want to do that. And uh, I was able to just get on top of it and square it through the middle. Yeah, I've noticed uh, since moving to O'Bray, you've had a lot of uh, foul balls that have made you range over towards those stands over there, and you've even ran into those stands a couple of times. Yeah. What uh, What's that element like over there, battling with that wall and stuff? The wall, it's not so bad when you don't actually run into it. It's really nice, actually, because you have all that extra room. But when you run into it, it doesn't feel very good. But I do enjoy the extra room because that was something at Alley P that we didn't have. I think we had maybe five yards of between the foul line and the fence. So it's nice being able to go over there and not really worry about being right next to the fence and then being able to go past the line and make plays. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate that. No problem. Carson, I think it's you. Carson, thanks, Gabe. Carson, you want Carson now? Yeah. Okay, he's ready. Sweet. Thank you, guys. What's up, guys? <laughs> How y'all doing? Uh, I mean, I was about to say, Carson, like, we go to the shame shaven place, man. Like, what's up? Like, what happened? <laughs> no, hey, um, what, what was it? The Goodfellas? Like, the what, what was the nickname? The what? Just the fellas. I don't know. I was just messing around. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, like, I was looking, you know, uh, you probably heard me tell Cade, like, you're both fifth-year seniors, you know, corner outfielders, big guys. You know, to me, like, it looks like a little similar playing style. I'm surprised nobody's, like, giving you, you know, a nickname or anything like that yet. Yeah, no, it's kind of weird. I mean, me and Kate have spent a lot of time together. I'm sure he told you guys that. I'm, it's our fourth year together. We went to summer ball together. I mean, like, that's my guy, you know, but uh, nothing's really come of it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No nicknames. Yeah. And batting together in the lineup, like, how do you think that worked, um, you know, you guys together today? It was good. I mean, I think we were both pretty locked in at the plate, and then uh, we were able to score some runs off each other, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I struck out one at bat, and Kate was right behind me to pick me up, get a base hit with the bases loaded, score two runs, you know? So, I mean – just kind of feed off each other, pick each other up when we can. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Carson, um, kind, of, kind of speaking to that, you guys both being fifth-year guys, this is kind of a new roster. Um, is that fun that, that you and Kate are kind of still constant and still obviously providing runs for the team? 100%, yeah. I mean, all the fifth-year guys, me, Cade, Max, uh, Al, Parker, just all those guys, just, you know, spending so much time with each other, we've created, like, pretty tight bond, you know, and, um, it just, I think it makes our chemistry just so much better on the field. Can you take me through, uh, that home run there in the, in the second, your second home run of the day, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I was getting a lot of first pitch sliders. So I went up to Vic first. And I was like, Hey, should I sit first pitch slider right here? And he's like, yeah. So I told Josh, I'm like, Hey, I'm sitting first pitch slider. And I got it and swung at it and it worked out, you know? Um, it, it you've hit a lot of far home runs in your career here. Do you think that's the, the furthest? I don't know. That's got to be up there for sure. There's that's probably top two. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Carson. First, I just got to ask. Uh, there in that seventh inning, it looked like Brock almost took you out with that foul ball. You, you had to be on your toes there a little bit, huh? Oh no, I was not ready for that. I was I was talking to Vic about something. That thing came away. I had no idea what to do, so I just kind of jumped out of the way. How close was that to to hitting you? It felt like it was close. I don't know, but it felt real close. It looked pretty close up here, but so yeah, you've been back now for a while with your after your injury, having to sit out for um, those first 18, 19 games, something like that. But you've you've come back and you've really hit your stride now. I mean, you've hit home runs in three games in a row. Just what have you been? What have you been seeing up there at the plate, just to kind of get that confidence back instilled in you, like immediately? Uh, I mean, just trying to go up there and just see the ball and hit the ball. You know, just keep it as simple as I can, and I feel like it's allowing me to get closer and closer to kind of who I am in the box and feeling comfortable. You know. Yeah. Thanks. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Carson. Thank you.
Coach, what's going on? Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great. Um, a lot of baseball today. Uh, as that's not news to you, kind of take me through, you know, everything, you know, uh, in general, what do you see today? Uh, two quality starts, uh, Parker and Justin both. <clears throat> um, some courageous bullpen uh, work by Brett to, to kind of wiggle out of a little bit of a little bit of a jam that we built and uh, he showed the poise at the end there to wiggle his way out of it. So that was uh, really, really big. And uh, I, I was proud of the way that uh, he came in and inherited something that maybe mentally he wasn't anticipating and then got thrust upon him rather quickly. Uh, some good swings in the first game. Uh, obviously, a couple of homers from Max and Carson, a big hit from Encarnacion. Uh, I thought the second game, we were awfully good. Um, a lot of good at bats, a lot of guys on base. Really thought Jackson Kroll showed up well today playing for an injured Trinkle. Really like what he brought to the team as far as seeing pitches and getting on base and bunting and stealing and playing defense and all those things. I thought he was a real... Uh, uh, disruptive player, uh, very offensive, disruptive player. Uh, obviously, Carson's home run late was huge, but I think probably the guy that was the most steady and, and really delivered was Cade. I, I thought Cade's base hit to knock into and home run early, those are those are clutch swings that changed the whole trajectory of that game, and, and uh, I thought he had a tremendous day at the plate, continues to make some, some great catches in right field. So very much a team effort. Um, but I, I think that you saw well-rounded, good baseball from start to finish uh, all day long. And three walks in that first game. What did you think about Cade's plate discipline? Well, he looked incredibly calm and very comfortable and very much at ease, very confident. Those things usually allow you to see the ball really good and make the right choice of what to swing at. Now, Coach, it's an easy comparison to make, at least from up here. Um, when you look at Cade and um, – and uh, McCusker, you know, corner outfielders, fifth year seniors, both guys who can hit for power. Um, to me, it looks a little bit like they're a similar kind of ball player. Um, do you see that in, in those two guys? I think they're both fantastic kids. Um, they've been uh, a joy to be around. Um, they work hard. They're awesome people. They're great students. They're gentlemen. They treat people with great respect. Um, they're the kind of kids that you would you would be blessed if your daughter had a chance to meet. They're the highest level human being. Um, they're both big and strong. Um, they both do a lot of really good things on the field, and, and they're true cowboys. I mean, they're they're special kids. They're obviously a little bit different player, um, but to your point, they're they're pillars of our team, and they stand for everything that's good about what we do. And, you know, lastly, uh, there's no nickname for them yet. I was kind of surprised they've been around for so long and they're so noticeable and, you know, fun guys to root for. Surprised no nickname has been given to them yet. Some of those nicknames are secret, Ben. we got to keep a few things under the hat. All right. I won't even ask. I, I trust you there. Thanks a lot, Coach. You're welcome. Yeah, Josh, this is the first time I can remember in covering one of your teams where you've had a pitcher also hit. Um, just kind of what was what, what went into that decision, and obviously, you know, Justin's a, a good at both of them. So it's a tough it's a tough decision because um, pitchers have so much demand placed on their legs and their focus and their bodies. Um, Justin is good at both. Um, kind of look at the matchups today and our variable players based on health. I really felt like a left-handed hitter was needed in that spot that he that he held in both games one and two. An ideal setting. I like to bring him off the bench late. He's a clutch hitter late in the game, especially the day he pitches. I would have preferred letting him just put all of his all of his energy into his pitching, but I didn't feel like today that was the luxury we had. Uh, he actually likes to hit and pitch, he told me. Um, he did it once last year against BYU, I believe. He started that game both at pitcher and DH or maybe one of the games last year before we got shut down. But um, he's a unique talent. Uh, Two-way player is something he wanted to do when we recruited him. He's good at it. It's a lot to ask a kid. Um, and, and, and managing it is new to me. I haven't done it a whole lot. Uh, in fact, I can't remember anyone off the top of my head. So I try to ask him a lot of questions, see how he's feeling. 
uh, let listen to his body a little bit, let him kind of tell me what he thinks he's capable of because when he's fresh and he's mentally committed to it, he's awfully good, and it's my job to make sure I put him in position to be successful. Today we needed a lot of him, and he gave us everything he had. This is the first time – this is probably the, the hardest the field has been tested with the, the storm last night and then the doubleheader today. Kind of how did you feel it, it held up? It's incredible, yeah. You know, last night's game could have been played if not for what we thought was going to be 50-mile-per-hour gusts, which we were – a little unsure how a wet field and gusts of that nature, what kind of setting that would be for a game. Um, in hindsight, it could have gone either way. We made the decision to try to put the kids on a dry, safe field with better conditions, so we went with today's doubleheader. So um, it, it handled it great, as you can tell looking out there. It's, it's in amazing shape, and I think we have the blessing of a nice day tomorrow, and Wilmington doesn't travel till, till Monday. So we, we could push tomorrow's game back a little bit to let these kids get a good night's sleep. And then last thing, it's not, not a big deal, but the the, uh, the review um, from the, the catch, not catch in center, there was then a counter review. Do you know, did you get an explanation on what they were asking the review to be for? We asked that the play be reviewed to see if it was a catch, no catch, of which they decided it was a no catch. The opponent then asked to review to see if the base runner who hit the ball ran past the runner at first, which it was ruled he did not, but even had he, the fact that it was ruled a catch and an out on the field, it was our fault that it wouldn't have mattered. But as it stands, the umpires decided that that was the nature of the call, that it was indeed a hit. They put each player up one base, and, you know, that was that. So if you watch left baseball, you see crazy stuff. That was an interesting play. I've not seen that one in college. Appreciate it, Josh. You're welcome. Yeah, Josh, I wanted to ask you just about your, your pitching today all around. I know when you have a doubleheader, there could be a concern of maybe draining the bullpen and stuff like that, but you only used five guys today. And so I just wanted to know, like, how did you just feel overall about the, the five guys that you brought out there? Uh, I, I felt great about it. I mean, again, Zach had a, a good inning in the eighth and then he just couldn't get that first out in the ninth. And, and when you give him bases loaded, you, you give him hope. And so other than the ninth inning, I mean, that again, Brett was uh, very – courageous and heroic. I mean, he, you know, just took the cap to Brett. I mean, he, he inherited a mess and he, and he, he sold it through it and got, got to the end of the line. So other than that one inning, I think our bullpen guys did a nice job and we've got to continue to show confidence and believe in guys and try to continue to extend the line in terms of guys that we know can get big outs for us. And he'll give you those, uh, three innings there in the game too. Uh, what'd you just think? what do you think of him on the mound in those three innings? I liked, I, liked, uh, I liked the way he went about his business. Um, continues to make good strides. Um, super valuable piece of a bullpen is a guy that can kind of be that bridge guy from the middle to the end, or in this particular case, from the end to the finish. He, he took the ball in the seventh and carried it to the ninth. So that was a big outing and got some fresh arms down there tomorrow. It's going to be an important game three. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask you about just kind of from Parker Scott's standpoint, he Pretty much he prepares to start yesterday and he ends up like, you know, going through his routine of getting ready to start a game last night. And then he's got to wait until this afternoon to start a game. Does that, what does that do for, to a starting pitcher? How does that change kind of how they go about their business, stuff like that? I mean, all adjustments to the schedule do challenge you to roll with the punches. I mean, I think an ideal setting, I would love for these guys to be on a very consistent schedule. Everybody's better on a routine, but I think he handled the adjustment. Well, I mean, it's a, a ramping up of your emotions and concentration to compete and then a slowing back down of it, only to then reboot your system the very next day. So there's all those different ways that's kind of like if, you know, you're taking a super important exam and you got all geeked up to, to take it, you studied like crazy and you had all the answers and you just knew everything and you were ready to go. You didn't want to wait. Then you got to wait and take it the next day. It's like, okay, how do I study again? Do I do the same thing? Do I bank on remembering it? You know, it's like a, so there's a mental side, and then obviously there's the physical side. So it's it's both the mental preparation for a test and then the physical execution of the sport. And I think that's kind of where probably the bigger challenge lies in getting your mind wrapped around being ready to be at your best. And my last thing for you, what do you usually do? And what's your routine between games, like for a doubleheader? What do you usually do between games one and two? I'm usually kind of evaluating the sandwich options. Um, Today, Old Jersey Mike's was outstanding. Um, and then it just depends on how many minutes we have before we get going. Um, really, today, I just wanted to be around the players, 
cherish these days with them. I mean, you blink and you're halfway through the season. So um, just try to share good good vibes and, and build and grow and move forward. So yeah, had a nice sandwich today and just got ready to get to do this again. It ended up being a beautiful night. I thought it was an amazing crowd. I mean, I looked out in the outfield and I just, I mean, I just saw people having fun and beautiful night for a baseball game. Yeah, I'm glad Jersey Mike's came through for you today. Thanks very much, Coach. There you go. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. See y'all.